Thanks, John. Uh, thank you all for coming out. I will say that despite being a mathematician, I don't have any crazy formulas in here, so uh, apologies if you were looking for those. Uh, but this is uh, some joint research that uh, my colleagues at Rhoda College did. Uh, Harry Wilson is the current director of i and uh, is a political scientist, and Ali is our senior analyst, and she's an economist. So uh, that's sort of some background information there. Uh, let's go on and see what we did. Uh, what we wanted to do is something I haven't seen a lot in the a programs is doing the same study in different modes at the same time and then really just not caring about most of the modes because uh, what we did here was use something we do on a quarterly basis. We do a version of the University of Michigan's Consumer Sentiment Survey. Uh, University of Michigan version has 28 questions on it. Uh, the subset of that is used to come up with the monthly consumer sentiment uh, index that they talk about. Uh, they use 500 nationwide telephone surveys to do that, and that's been used since 1952. So trends there are well understood. Uh, we've done it in the state since 2013 on a quarterly basis, so we've known exactly, well, exactly, plus or minus, uh, somewhat how this behaves in the state of Virginia and how it tracks with the national index. So we sort of feel like we have good uh, confidence in this, uh, in this process. Uh, but we wanted to do this at the same time so that we sort of eliminate any sort of change in consumer uh, behavior, change in consumer sentiment as time goes on. So being in the field with five different modes uh, sounded like something fun to do. Uh, so that was our study. Uh, if you wanted to look at the questions, here are the five base questions that we use for all five modes of data collection. Uh, the first and last are sort of, how are you doing now? What do you feel about the current economy? Uh, one is how your family is doing versus one year ago. The last one is about, do you want to buy things like furniture and TVs right now? Uh, the middle three questions are forward thinking, uh, what are either business or family conditions a year to five years from now. Um, so that's uh, the base of the study. The modes we did, uh, one is caddy, so we do a regular uh, uh, caller telephone interview survey using Boxco at Roanoke College, so IPOR is our acronym. Um, Rick's, uh, Burton will talk about Rick's coming up here in the next, but it's a uh, short version of that. It's redirected inbound call sampling from Reconnect Research. Uh, People who misdial a phone number, uh, call a phone number that's no longer in service, uh, might get sent to do a survey, and that's the procedure there, so that's done through IVR. Uh, Ask Your Target Market is an online panel uh, done through email. Uh, they will send out your survey to uh, people and they'll complete it. Uh, Pollfish is a mostly app-based uh, data collection method, but they do some things online as well. Uh, and Google surveys, we all know about Google, but Google surveys either collects data through <laughs> Uh, asking people questions when you go to websites before you read an article, or through their Google, uh, what is it, uh, Google Consumer Rewards app, I think is what it is, an opt-in uh, version. Uh, time to complete here, we wanted 600 responses for all of these. Uh, caddy for us, it took eight days. Caveat there is we asked more than just those five questions. We've got a live person on the phone. Uh, I think we all know if you have someone live on the phone, you want to ask them as much as you possibly can. Uh, so we also do a real estate index. Uh, we do a uh, health and depression uh, index, we do a political anxiety index along with demographics. Uh, Rick's uh, 16 days there. Uh, to asterisk there is that uh, this is the first time that Rick's has done a, just a statewide Virginia survey and uh, the proportion of calls they were getting for uh, our survey weren't, wasn't quite as high as they would get somewhere in California or somewhere else nationwide. So uh, if we did that again, it would certainly go down because uh, Scott mentioned we could uh, get more calls from there. Uh, ask your target market, took two days, pull fish, uh, 22 hours. I was uh, shocked when I saw that. Uh, I opened up my email, I was like, you were done. Uh, Google surveys took about two and a half days. Cost per complete here, again, the asterisks are here, $16.50 for one of ours, but again, we're spending about 15 minutes on the phone with the respondent. Uh, $4.85 for Rick's, and then the other numbers, uh, pull fish and Google surveys are usually a dollar a uh, response, but if you do some targeting like statewide and whatnot, they charge a little more. Um, demographic comparisons. Uh, first one here, this is gender. Uh, black bar is census from Virginia for 2010. Uh, we use census to wait for the index that we do. Uh, probably could do similar graphs here for uh, CPS or ABC, whatever sort of things we're looking at. Uh, not too surprising here that most things track pretty well. Uh, Ask your target market track very high female. I uh, heard someone speak yesterday about the fact that sometimes these opt-in email panels tend to skew female. Uh, so in this case, we saw that. Uh, one note here is that for Google, Google, the, when you fill out a survey online, the version they do on a website, they don't ask you gender, so they don't know that information, so about 20% of our responses were missing gender for Google. Uh, Google does, doesn't provide as much demographics as we would like, so you'll see it missing for most of these. As far as age goes, 
Uh, no surprise here, if you do caddy surveys, you realize that telephone-based surveys tend to skew older. Uh, so in this case, caddy for us and bricks for us both skewed on the older side. Um, not probably too surprising either that the online methods tend to skew a little bit younger. Uh, Google, again, doesn't provide <laughs> the same age ranges that we like, and they don't provide the exact age, so in that case, we couldn't really compare those. Uh, looking at race, uh, Google doesn't provide race data, but they don't let you, unless maybe you pay a lot more, uh, ask demographic questions or personally identifiable information questions. Uh, nothing really too surprising here. Ricks tend to skew more black, but uh, probably not too far away from what the uh, statewide numbers are. Um, region, uh, we divide the Commonwealth of Virginia into six regions that are uh, very uh, distinct in a way. Uh, if you look at this, you'll notice that the Category <laughs> tends to track very well. We use quotas to ensure that we're reaching the right demographics there with the regions, so that should track well. As far as how the others track, uh, most of them track very well, with the exception that uh, Polefish really, really got a lot of people from Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia is the, the D.C. metro area in the state of Virginia, and they got almost close to 50% uh, there, which is <coughs> kind of crazy. Yeah. Again, Google doesn't give us that region data, so I couldn't give you that. Now, if you like some statistics here, uh, if you take a look at each of these and run a goodness of fit test versus census information, uh, here's what we come up with. Uh, you'll notice here that we're looking for things that are not significant if you want things to match the census. So the goodness of fit test, we're looking for higher p-values. Um, Monster talked about don't be afraid of waiting. I think that's what this chart says, is any data you get from anywhere, you probably want to do some, some massaging there with some weights to see how it works out. Uh, notice here that I guess I should be happy that our uh, quotas work because if we're actually calling, getting the percentages of phone calls to match the regions, we should get a very low uh, high square value there or a high p value, which we do. Um, other things of interest, uh, certainly what are the results, but before we get there, uh, I'm still afraid of design effect a little bit, uh, especially looking at polefish. Design effect there was a little over three, which honestly scares the hell out of me as an uh, aspiring statistician, I suppose. Uh, cut our affected sample size into a third. 600 responses worth about 200 in. Uh, the others there are very respectable. So caddy for us, 1.7 is a little on the high side. We tend to run around 1.6, but uh, that's, that's typical. Rick smashed uh, almost the same. Uh, Astro target market was a little lower. And Google, Google provides their own weighting, so I don't know how their weights are done, but if you use their own weights, their own weights result in the design effect of 1.37. Uh, and again, that's 118 missing responses there that got a weight of zero because they don't have the demographics, which is sad. Uh, look at the questions. So we have those five questions. How do those five questions compare? Uh, this, the study we did here used the caddy results as the baseline. Uh, we know how the caddy responses perform uh, relative to the quarterly study we're doing and how they track with national. So it felt reasonable to at least think about how do these four methods compare with caddy in the sense of if we wanted to reduce costs somehow, could we replace some or all of the caddy surveys with one of these other methods? Uh, so you'll see here gray boxes again represent things that are similar enough to caddy that seem nice. Uh, Rick's compared well on three of the questions. Uh, target market one question and polefish two questions. Uh, polefish is looking nice, except that design effect still scares the hell out of me. Uh, takeaways here, and probably not terribly surprising, it's at least some, some moderate evidence that phone-based methods track well with each other, and that online methods might track well with each other, uh, which kind of says there might be some difference between people hearing a question over the phone and people seeing a question for themselves and being able to read it for themselves along with the options. So, uh, I've got some other numbers there if we can talk about those later during the, uh, the Q&A part, but uh, for now, I uh, just wanted to thank the Roanoke College Faculty Development Committee for funding this money, uh, funded the study here, and thanks Scott Richards and the folks at Ricks because they were nice to waive the $500 setup fee so we could get this done. And, uh, it, was, it was nice to include that and see what came up. So uh, our contact information is there. If you've got questions later, we can certainly talk about them. But thank you. Thank you.